we were due to to have a break now, um, but I think it was my fault we ran over a bit. Um, I should have done a 20 minute talk, I did a 35 minute talk. Um, so we're going to jump straight into Will's talk. Um, so Will, are you are you there? I am. Hello. Hello. How are I'm you? The, uh, new branded merch in there. Uh, wearing the merch. Fine sight. I have a hat here, but it makes me look like I work at Burger King. <laughs> I'm going to leave that off fair and, enough, uh, and just stick fair. with the hoodie. How are you, Ben? Yeah, yeah, we're very good, thank you. How about you? Yeah, good. I'm excited. Good, good. Us too. Um, so, yeah, let's uh, let's roll. I mean, it's, so we'll, I'll introduce Will shortly, and then we're, uh, we're going straight on to, uh, on to Ram's talk. So, Will, today is going to be talking about how to land links and build authority without the need for huge campaigns, a topic that we've seen cropping up time and time again, not just today, but probably more than ever since the pandemic hit last year. So Will is has a background in digital PR and well, traditional PR and over seven years of experience in digital PR and likes to think of himself as SEO's answer to Patsy and Eddie. So his role is to oversee the PR offering and to make sure that at Rise at Seven, they're doing the best campaigns in the world from interviewing stars of RuPaul's Drag Race, newsjacking on financial markets, to turning caravans into Buckingham Palace. I think every single person today has probably come across the work that you guys are doing at Rise at Seven over the past year, past two years. And today, Will's going to be sharing and discussing how to land links on high authority sites without the need for these huge creative campaigns. Um, please drop any questions into the Q&A. Uh, we'll get through as many of those as we can. And uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, thanks for joining as well. No problem. So I'll share my screen now. Amazing. Right, we'll get kick started. Perfect. So, yep, as James said, I'm going to be talking about how to build links and authority without the need for huge campaigns. So before we get started, I just tell, like to tell you yourselves a little bit about me. So um, I'm Will Hobson, PR Director. So some of the things that I like to do are news checking, reactive PR, financial PR, celeb PR, product PR, basically any PR. Um, I also love Drag Race, Reality TV, Girls Aloud, Supermix, Harry Bale, and if you want to buy me a drink whispering angel is my new go-to um yeah so let's get started so first of all some things that i'd like you to take away from today is just that realization that you you don't need to build a big campaign to land links and also build authority and um, a plan to actually start and keep a constant flow of links going in so hopefully you, i'll be able to help you put together a bit more of an actionable plan to do that um, and then also what to do when something doesn't work and how you can use reactive pr and and this type of, of, of activity to pivot um, and actually utilize things that you might already have and trends that are already happening so first of all, I'm going to, I want you to picture this. So we're going to go back a little bit in time and tell you a bit of a story. So it's March 23rd, 2020, COVID-19 is spreading rapidly and the news agenda is just absolutely consumed. So everyone in the PR industry in the world felt a little bit like this, a little bit deflated. Um, I totally knew that like all our roadmaps went out the window. We literally had to, me and Carrie spent one night on a Sunday, like up all night going through all our roadmaps and redoing them and, and thinking how we could pivot and how we could change our stories to actually still land media because everything we knew had, had totally changed. So a lot of PRs and brands didn't know what to do and, and six to 12 month roadmaps were totally scrapped. And that made us work harder. So we had to be, we had to prepare to work harder, bitch, which is basically what I want to say. Um, and this is where reactive PR really came into its own. So as the press changed and big campaigns became almost impossible, reactive and proactive PR was, was definitely the way to go. And it enables you to still land national links on a red, regular basis without the need to do huge design and huge development pieces and, and actually still be able to, to pivot your campaigns and not necessarily worry how the media was changing that you could actually work with it. So that kept me feeling like, yes, bitch, we can do it. We, we don't necessarily have to rely on these big campaigns um, in a time where everything is, is constantly changing. Um, so 
it can work for so many different industries. I think when I used to think of news checking when I, when I first started in digital PR specifically, it would be mainly just financial news that this would work for, but that's not the case. It can work for so many different industries. And I've just picked a few to go through that I'll just talk through some topics that I would focus on and, and some trends that you'd be able to pull and get some tactics out of there um, to generate some, some great results. So starting off with travel. So we have quite a lot of travel brands that we work with and when the pandemic first hit, I feel like everyone was like, ah, um, in terms of travel, because no one could go anywhere. And, and a lot of brands turned off their activity. And, and one thing that we said to a lot of our clients is, look, with, this is when we need to be working harder. We need to change what we're doing and, and re-pivot and, and work a little bit differently to show that we can still have value in, in digital PR and SEO. And it still needed to work hard just because the, the climate had changed. So when kind of the pandemic first hit and all sorts of media totally changed. One of the first things that we saw was virtual travel. So for travel industries, there was a lot of campaigns going on and like you can visit X from here, from your sofa. And these are the different maps that you can go to and X, Y, Z. And, and virtual travel became a really good topic. And, and one thing to pick out from this is these topics like re-emerge and kind of go away and come back. So virtual travel, for example, was huge in March, April, May, and then it was gone. And then we totally turned to, to inspiration and all sorts of kind of different um, different topics to focus on. And then bucket list travel came in, staycations became a huge thing when we were allowed out of our first lockdown. However, what has become, we didn't necessarily know in terms of the, the, the way that the press went, became a bit of a trend within itself. So like during the lockdowns, as they each came around, we were able to re-push some of this reactive and re-push some of these kind of topics that we could do. So virtual travel was great. March, April, May disappeared, but it came back. So it kind of had a bit of a resurgence in the second lockdown and the third lockdown. So we kind of then start to navigate this new PR world of, of lockdowns and trends that work within that. Um, so it's just some really cool stuff that you can do just based on a few different topics like that. Um, staycations, like I said, huge August. So that was a big topic that you could jump on, whether it was industry data and showing where people were going in the UK, where people wanted to go in the UK for staycations. Um, as, and also industry data, that was really useful in terms of just just because this has never happened before. And especially travel brands then were able to jump on it and say, look, this is what we're experiencing. And this is what it's kind of happening with whether it's staycations or into industry data of, OK, this is what the trends look like of the UK station mar staycation market, for example. And it just really shows that we can kind of put a bit of an authority on it by doing these quick pieces and quick data stories on that subject. So plenty to do within travel that doesn't necessarily have to be about going up to different countries. We can make it work with, with subjects that we have already. And the finance, this is a huge place for reactive PR. So just a few topics that I've picked out there. So saving tips. So quick commentary from a brand such as a savings brand or savings account or a price comparison site, for example, they could be like five tips to save for X. So something that we did when the pandemic first hit was make, utilizing what people were spending. So obviously everyone was, I was saving loads of money in the pandemic because I wasn't going anywhere. I wasn't doing anything. So we were basically kind of putting that out in tips and saying, okay, well, why don't you transfer your spending that you might have used to commute and put it into a savings account and giving tips like that, just actionable and a little bit of positivity. Cause obviously during this time in finance, it was such doom and gloom with the high street failing and, and all sorts of things like that, that we were giving a bit of a positive spin. And, and that was really good for reactive PR um, furlough and redundancy furlough, by the way, I didn't even know what that word meant before the pandemic. I thought it was made up for the pandemic. Um, but that was a really good subject to jump on for, for reactive PR, even just clarifying what furlough is and also who could claim it. And cause, and the beauty of that, this type of reactive PR is it constantly kept changing. So we could have experts at brands giving out comments on furlough as it changed and as the deadlines moved and it became building, we kept built relationships with journalists who came back to us and said, oh, furlough's changed again, Rishi Sunak's decided to move it back. So we need another comment. And we'd have things that were already banked. So loads and loads of different topics that you can pull out during this time that's a bit doom and gloom for finance, but also quite good for reactive um, financial PR. And um, the high street and airlines are a really interesting subject. And I've got a bit of a case to do that I'll talk further down the line. But the high street was a huge thing that was able to 
you were able to do reactive commentary on, especially from a financial brand or a financial analyst. For example, any time that a high street store went um, bust or went into administration, um, we were able to kind of offer commentary on, okay, well, what does this mean for the market going forward? What does it mean for the high street? So obviously recently we've just had Topshop and um, being bought out by ASOS and the Boohoo Group by Debenhams and all sorts of kind of huge corporations coming in and changing up the high street. So that's been an amazing time to, again, re-emerge this commentary and add value to journalist articles of what does this mean for the future of the high street? So loads and loads of subjects to talk about um, in finance. Automotive, again, another industry that's really good to do reactive PR on. So there's so much snow at the moment. So the weather plays a huge part into this. So we build up banks of commentary so that when anytime the snow comes out, we can send to all the snow live blogs to anyone mentioning snow of how to how to drive in the snow, for example. And then you can even do things down into theft and virtual travel within automotive. And theft, for example, how to secure your car while you're always at home in case that someone is obviously not moving a lot, how to drive how to keep it going so there's so many different kind of how to's and thought leadership that feed into this reactive pr for automotive that can be really useful without building a huge campaign and then finally this topic fashion so fashion is a really good one for for reactive pr and a good subject to focus on but um interestingly the first kind of topic within this fashion sector that i've put is masks and this was really interesting for fast fashion because in at the beginning of the pandemic which is like a common theme throughout this talk of it, the media constantly changing and it, it, we having to constantly adapt to that, which I think has been really fun yet challenging over the past kind of 12 months. But masks back in March were a huge no-no. It was kind of seen as profiting on the pandemic and it was really kind of negative. However, when the government brought in the law that you had to wear a mask in a shop, then it totally changed the game. So again, totally changed the, the kind of press outlook and the media aspect of that masks were then acceptable so a lot of brands started work, kind of selling masks and then there was the infamous plt mask dress and then obviously kind of we've done a few more product pr pieces on top of that with mask hoodies because don't know about you guys but i'm always forgetting my um, mask when i go to the shop so if i can have a hoodie where it's built in perfect so masks became a great thing for kind of jumping and doing a bit of reactive product pr and um, netflix fits into this and um, anything that happens on netflix and disney plus any streaming service in kind of popular culture you're able to kind of channel into PR. So I've got a few examples of that further down in a plan that we can kind of build together. Um, and then matching is a huge trend. So anything that's matching, whether it's dog and owner, whether it's partner, whether it's kind of family, um, it depends at the time of the year that's really good for that one. But really some simple kind of um, tips to use within the fashion industry. Cool. So obviously talk to, talked about kind of different topics that you can kind of jump on for um, kind of reactive PR in the industries that are working, but how do you actually spot those trends to begin with? Um, so something that is really simple is just Google Trends. Just jumping on there, typing in different keywords that you found either from social or from reading the news and finding out different things and, and just kind of popping them in and seeing actually have they peaked. And to be honest, it's more to use just to validate your idea, show that there is interest in it. The press, so the press is obviously something that PRs we are literally reading day in, day out, day out. And one thing that I love doing is kind of having my second screen set up with all the live blogs live. So the Guardian Business Live blog is perfect, as well as the BBC. Telegraph also do an amazing one. Um, and these just kind of have business news on there. But that tend, this tends to be the first place that covers a breaking news story, especially from a business point of view. And then you can kind of jump on that. And most journalists are watching this kind of live feed for themselves and kind of feeding that into into their stories and a lot of the times it's good to get kind of featured on these live blogs with any commentary that you have so this is just an example of one from a few days ago where bitcoin was trending so perfect opportunity to jump on that with a comment from a financial analyst of just explaining a little bit more about what that means and is it going to stay up or is it going to go down and all sorts of things like that but Sumo, amazing tool that I literally live in. Really good to just see what um, kind of trending topics are up there at the moment. So we often just do it as a bit of an idea validation just to find out, okay, well, is this is this trending in this country? Is it going to work? Is it finding other sorts? I always use it for brainstorms as well, just understanding like what topics to focus on that might be similar to, to my audience and, and have an interest of any brands that I'm working with. Um, but also they've got like even a little like coronavirus section as well. So there's all sorts of bits that are relevant to now so you can go down by section but always good to just keep your news um, ear to the ground with what's happening 
social. So keep up to date over social, what's trending on Twitter, as well as just following all the industry um, kind of garden and places all the time, but perfect to spot trends. Like I always get so much inspiration from, from social. Client data. I think this is really important, just understanding what your client's customers are searching for and also what your client's customers want. That can be really interesting to create PR campaigns out of. If there's a demand for something, then we can almost feed that demand and create something that the, the clients and um, the customers searching for or create a story or a PR story out of that search. So if there, if for example, there's been a Netflix show that has led to an increase in that search, then that's a PR story within itself. So kind of using that client data to, to find and, and spot those trends. Celebrity announcements. So spotting celebrity announcements is huge. So we do it a lot for some of our kind of lifestyle clients, but um, anytime there's an engagement or a celebrity does anything really, you can kind of pivot that. So obviously yesterday, Kim Kardashian posted the picture of that Northwest had painted. That could be a PR story within itself to jump on. So always keep it. And I absolutely love celebrities. So that's my kind of reasoning in there. Uh, but it's always a really good one to just kind of jump on and, and see anything anything that's happening that could, could be really press worthy. Netflix and other streaming services are huge, especially during lockdown, like because no one's got anything else to do. So looking at what's trending on Netflix and Disney Plus can enable it is to kind of feed that into popular culture. And I'm finding this fascinating recently, especially from like the Bridgerton effect. Like I remember when I came back after Christmas and I was literally screaming to everyone in the team, Bridgerton is going to be huge. It's everywhere. And it has been bigger than I actually thought. It's absolutely fed into like everything, and um, which has been insane. And I think because no, like I said, no one is going anywhere. Everyone is watching these shows and it's like the Tiger King effect as well. Like it's it's just everything's heightened. So we can jump on those trends and, and find relevance for loads of different fields, whether it's fashion with Bridgerton or it could be furniture or it could be anything that that should that taken from the show or travel, for example, you can you can make it relevant to anything um, and then kind of jump on that story for, for yourself and, and a brand. Stock market movements, they're a really interesting one. So I, for financial brands, but also it could move into lifestyle, but I tend to use something called investing.com, which is like a, um, it's where they all earnings calendars of like company reporting dates, as well as all sorts of different um, kind of financial movements and things like that um, are, are recorded. And you can do kind of a few different um, news checking tactics. And I've got some kind of examples a bit further that we'll talk through that kind of feed into this. But GameStop a few weeks ago was absolutely huge for the financial market. So obviously Reddit allowing people to um, trade on different stock movements and it kind of bringing up that interest in it. Um, and that was something that moved really quickly. And from a financial brand, we were able to comment on like, and what does, what is happening with GameStop? What does it mean? It never happened, but it, that, that type of interest in a brand had never happened before. And that Reddit control in that narrative was really interesting. So um, it was something that our financial analysts at different brands that we work with were really quick to comment on. And then we were able to land in national publications just talking about GameStop and adding value and not just relaying the story, but giving an opinion on, and how long it's going to stay up is there anything going to happen so really interesting stuff in in the stock market uk high street I've touched on that a little bit but the uk high street is massive at the moment obviously because a lot of stores are closing a lot of big brands are buying in other kind of more traditional brands so it's always going to be a talking subject and it has been for the past five years i remember running a campaign late last year just looking at the demise of the high street and that was before covid um so it's been heightened with covid as everything else has as well so once you've kind of spotted your trend, what next? So it's all about repositioning and pulling a news hook for your brand and making it relevant to you and also giving something extra and adding value. So here's an example of something and how to jump on a trend for a financial brand with news jacking and a few different tactics of news jacking that you can use. So we work with a brand called Ash Traders, which is a financial comparison site for Forex traders. And we do two strategies of, of news jacking. And one of that, one of those strategies is planned and one is reactive. And when I say planned, it is that company reporting commentary. So we plan out a roadmap for the course of the month and just say, okay, Tesco's releasing their quarterly earnings. We'll then plan a react reactive commentary once that earnings release they usually and they released at like 8 a.m in the morning and we'll kind of say okay this is what's happened this is what it means and then give a bit more of an extra opinion and, and that opinion is the real important bit because that's what lands you with press rather than just relaying the story so we'll kind of say okay tesco released their quarterly earnings. this is what it means this is what it could mean for the future of tesco as an example so that's one arm of the strategy um, and then the next is reactive which is a kind of touched on up, upon anytime anything happens in the stock market like gamestop anytime anything happens with the UK high street or the worldwide high street, 
will again offer that same commentary in that same format of not just relaying the story, give an opinion of what that means. And it can have some insane results. So I felt really bad, but during the pandemic, like every time a brand went bust, I was like, yes, because there was so many commentary opportunities for us. So what we do is add value, um, add value commentary to an already breaking news story. And these are just a few examples of headlines for that brand. Um, so again, planned reactive with HSBC slash the mid coronavirus, um, thousands of jobs cut, will I offer comments with all these publications. So all the airlines that were going bust as well as furlough was a huge subject as well as different kind of um, stores on the high street as well. So you can really add value. And I think what I wanted to emphasize with, with this type of campaign and this type of kind of um, reactive strategy is it can land a lot of placements and a lot of links. And it, this is over a course of a six month period. It doesn't just have to be this reactive, um, sorry, creative campaign. It can be this reactive strategy that brings in the volume of links that you need to also build an authority. And a lot of this time for over this six month period, we had journalists from The Guardian, the Telegraph coming to us and asking for commentary. So once you've built up that rapport, you can keep it going um, and keep it consistent. And like I said, without the need to build huge campaigns. So it doesn't need to just be about one-off pieces either. It can be smaller campaigns that are turned around quite quickly. So again, going back to virtual travel, that was a huge trend for traveling and um, travel brands during the pandemic. We spotted a trend for this. I remember March being like, Julie Delahaye at the Miro has remember being like, oh, she's talking about um, virtual travel. We need to do something on that. So we created virtual landmarks, which was just a blog post piece for one of our clients that just showed you how you could visit all sorts of landmarks around the UK from the comfort of your own sofa. Um, and this landed some huge play placements on like Lonely Planet, all sorts of really um, cool publications that was something that was a blog post pulled in all sorts of um, research, desk research from other available links to kind of virtual um, publications, virtual travel um, at different landmarks. And it was a really simple piece that we could turn around quite quickly and can be reutilized. Again, a few weeks later, we knew that Disney Plus was launching in the UK. Obviously, absolutely huge. People have been waiting for Disney Plus for years. So we just wanted to create a quick map that looked at every country's top Disney Plus film. Again, this was more moving into the trend of inspiration. So again, we couldn't really talk about going anywhere and traveling as a subject. So we had to look at, okay, well, what's relevant still to our audience, but then is it also a little bit more inspirational. So we moved into that and again, landed some insane links on the likes of kind of um, Business Insider, those types of publications, Mental Floss, um, around the world for something that was quite quickly executed. Again, moving on to staycations. So staycations was huge around August time. Everyone was released from lockdown, able to go to all these different UK destinations. So we saw it as a huge trend. We decided that actually we could position our brand as a bit of an authority and saying, look, this has never happened before. This level of people holiday in the UK has not happened in years. So we want to kind of position ourselves as an authority in this. And that's perfect for obviously Google's expertise, authority and trust in the brand. And we were able to create a report that just kind of divulged into these stats, looking at open data as well as customer data, which just showed, okay, where do people at holiday in the UK the most? Where are they kind of visited? Where, what, what trends are we seeing that we haven't seen before? And create an in-depth report that just looks into this. And then we were able to push this out to all sorts of different travel press as well. So once you've kind of spotted your trends, you've done it, I wanted to kind of obviously give you a bit more of an actionable plan. So I put together a top line, like how I would go about building a plan. So here's a few stories that you could execute right now without any labor intensive legwork. So a bit of an example of something we did, we spotted a trend for corsets based on the back of Bridgerton. So we decided that we decided to create a quick story for our client on this. And all we did is the best corsets to add to your wardrobe inspired by Netflix hit series Bridgerton. And we just saw that I think it was like a 300% increase in corsets have been searched on. So just used um, kind of a keyword tool just to find that trend um, and find that search volume and then push this out as a quick reactive story linking back to our products um, on our client site. So a quick piece that you can do quite quite without any labor intensive work. So let's create a quick plan for several industries. So I've just picked out several trends that we've seen over the past few weeks. So Bridgerton picked an industry and then put an execution to it. So Bridgerton, fashion, increasing corsets, as I've just mentioned. Um, mean Girls, so that was released in, on, the Netflix, um, on Netflix UK last week. So that could be a quick piece that you could do for fashion, looking at the increase in pink tracksuits, for example, or the increase in pink for, um, obviously, on Wednesdays, everyone wears pink. Um, GameStop, huge piece the past few weeks. So in the finance industry, we could just do a reaction 
active commentary on what this means for the market. Is it going to stay like this? How can we kind of utilize this for the future? And um, the weather has been a huge topic at the moment with the beast from these two, which has not turned out that bad, um, which we can move for automotive industry. Top five tips for driving in the snow. Um, and then Disney Plus, again, has recome really around since they're having Disney Plus Star and bringing all sorts of new content to it. It's brought it back into the media. So you could repush a campaign such as every country's top Disney Plus movie that you could just reuse. The High Street is the last trend. That has been a huge topic over, like I said, forever. So for finance, it might be anytime there's been an acquisition. So ASOS and Boohoo are making huge acquisitions at the moment. We'll do reactive commentary from financial brand of, of what this means. So a quick plan, but it's something that you I would recommend just creating for your brands and just creating a bit more of a, an actual plan. Once you've built this up, you can then keep going back to it and reverting, reverting to it. So once you've built up a bank, you can reuse commentary over and over again. So here's an example of how we did it for several jewelry brands and consistently did it over and over again. So. Brooklyn Beckham, anytime a celebrity gets engaged for a few of our jewelry brands, we'll just offer a comment, which is a valuation. So per, luckily, so many people have been getting, getting engaged recently from Brooklyn Beckham to Ariana Grande, Stacey Solomon, Solomon, Molly from the Saturdays, literally loads of celebrities. So it goes back to that thought when I said, keep your eyes on what celebrities are doing and anything that's newsworthy happens, you then again, jump on it for a brand and make it relevant to your brand. So it could be an insurance brand, for example, with these diamonds, how much is it going to cost Ariana Grande to insure her ring? So there's all sorts of ways that you can pivot it depending on what brand you're wanting to focus on. So it's never over. Once you've built a campaign or a reactive, reuse it when that trend comes back around. So remember those stories from the first lockdown? Well, we've been using them again this lockdown because it's had that same inspiration. So we've just been repushing content that we've already had. So the 10 popular um, most Disney movies around the world, basically, and then also a few activity pieces that we did. So don't forget about them. Once you've done them, you can reuse them again. Cool. Coming on to finally wrapping up my top tips. So top tips for on building links without a campaign, follow trends in the news and be ready to react quite quickly. Don't overcomplicate it. I think that's a big thing in just making sure that if, you, if it's too, I always think if it's too hard to, to explain in a sentence, don't do it. It needs to be really simple and to the point. Act fast. You've got a certain amount of time before that trend's going to run out. So I always think the bigger the trend, like obviously Bridgerton has been a bit of an anomaly. That, that's been a huge, but um, some trends can come and go very quickly. So you need to act fast. Don't be scared of failure. Like I think with this, because you haven't built a huge campaign, it doesn't matter if you fail because you can just learn from it and just kind of move on to your next one and find your next trend to jump on. Repeat, keep trying, keep trying and being persistent um, and be willing to pivot. So you might have to change your idea a little bit or change your reactive. And then also be willing to share. Don't kind of hold it all to yourself. Like I'm always kind of vocal online of I'm showing people how we've done it. And, and that's something that I think is going to help everyone else learn as well, which is really cool. Cool. And that is it. I don't know what I'm on for timing, but I've, I've rattled through it. Amazing. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, Will. That was a really, really good session. And we've okay. got lots and lots of questions. Um, Amazing. Let's, yeah, let's jump in. I mean, if we, uh, if we need to go over, I'm sure you will be on Twitter later on to, to answer yeah, any follow-ups. Any questions. Absolutely. Um, so, I mean, the, the one I'll start with is how do you respond to this situation? You get coverage without a link. And when you ask for a link, the journalist responds that they don't link out because of their internal editorial guidelines. I just say, fine, no issues. <laughs> just be like, I don't think push it. Like, there's no point pushing it. Like, I just, I would literally only ask politely once. And then if the journalist said no, there's literally no point pushing it anymore. So I'd just be like, no probs. See yeah. you. Yeah, no, I think I, I fully agree with you there. Um, another one that's been asked is, how do you juggle planned PR and reactive pieces? What takes priority? Um, if the news story is huge, I would obviously prioritize reactive. But with that, going back to like the financial PR, you can plan the react them. Sorry, plan the planned in like a month in advance because you can go on like company um, reportings and company earnings calendars and kind of plan a month in advance. Then the reactive is just going to be as and when. And that's why it's good to have a bit of a team of reactive people who like that, so that you can kind of ping that around and make you aware of that story. Basically, like I said, I tend to have a second screen that's just got those kind of yeah. RSS feeds as well well as like um, live blogs from the Guardian up there. So you can see, you can jump really quickly. So I would prioritize reactive if it's a huge story 
um, over planned, but you can kind of juggle both both together quite well. Yeah, of course you can. No, great, thank you. Um, how do you link celebrity news and Netflix shows back to clients? Again, so, I think, I think a it, really interesting one that I think you guys do really, really well, sort of jumping on that, taking that stuff that maybe isn't the really obvious opportunities and hooking them. So yeah, how, how do you go about, what's your thought? About yeah, that? I think it's about finding how it's relevant because like, for example, the Netflix shows with Bridgerton, it's that increase in corsets is then that's relevant to fashion because we're selling corsets. So within our product PR, we'll be like, oh, in corsets, searches for corsets have increased by 300% and here's the corsets that you can buy. So it's kind of relevant that way. And then with the celebrity news and the jewelry, it's the valuation of it. So we'll have an expert from a jewelry brand and they'll be saying, okay, this uh, Brooklyn Beckham's rings worth 300,000. And that's positioning them as an expert in what they are because they're a valuator and jewelry expert. So it kind of fits in that way. So I think there's a way to like pivot and find, find a way to make it relevant. Cool. No, thank you. Um, I'm going to pick two more um, so we don't run too much over, but there's, there's lots to get through. Um, so, well, great presentation. I love the work of Rise. We're a B2B firm. It's traditionally boring and niche industry. I'm determined this shouldn't mean we can't do things that create impact and deliver tangible results. Have you got any examples of B2B firms being creative in digital PR or any advice for B2B or boring brands? Yes, I love B2B and boring. So don't be scared of it being like not being able to work for digital because I think you can like I've worked with a lot of like payments brands in the ta- in the past and you can make it relevant and it's not even moving far away from the subject. So I work with a payment brand and we look at small business, for example, and then we look at a lot of like index style pieces. So it might be like best it is to start a business. Then we find like interesting subjects and way and maybe like prototype products and things like that. So I think there is a way, but you've just got to be willing to like look at your secondary audience without making it irrelevant i would say cool yeah and i think it comes back to again that everything is interesting to somebody isn't it you know yeah. you just gotta find what like, that is. i didn't think i'd love financial br but i do i thought i'd be like obsessed with celebrities which i still am yeah. but do you know what i mean like, i think you do find something interesting that you didn't necessarily think you would yeah and i think it's getting to understand that industry as well isn't it you know some of them you know you have to work a little bit harder you know you're going to travel you go into you know the celebrity angles and it's almost second nature to a lot of us simply by, you know, what we do in our personal lives. And, you know, it's e- really easily accessible. But when you go to B2B, I think just knowing that, knowing that market, doing the research, digging a bit deeper. Yeah, 100%. So the, the last one, is there any way to do reactive PR without an expert to provide comments, perhaps with a product instead? Um, it depends. I think I know that's. Uh, I hate it depends, but you know, put it in there anyway. The SEO and you coming out. I know. I know. It's like, mm, it depends. But I do think there is a way. I think it depends on what your industry is. But I would almost try and find an expert or at least make one like by by, I don't know an employee that you can put in that role or someone to position as an expert I mean you can do it with product and do product PR but I wouldn't necessarily say it's the same reactive PR but and again it could be if you have a lot of data you could do it from the brand but I do think people buy into people a lot better so it is better from a journalist point of view they want to see who this person is they want it to be a real person they want to buy into them so i would always rec- recommend trying to have a person but if you can't that you can probably get around it if you've got good data cool amazing Ooh. thank you very much will um there are more questions sadly we're out of time um i'm sure anyone as i said can take to twitter i'm sure uh, you've yeah, there, are, there are some in the chat so if you're able to stick around for 10 minutes they are in the chat i'm sure people would love to uh love to get the answers so yeah thank you uh thanks for that will thanks for joining thanks for taking the time and uh really really great insights thank you so much cool thank you